I've been researching prehistoric Southwest pottery for many decades, and the one pottery type I always come back to that you just fall in love with are the Mimbres pottery vessels, the bowls, because they illustrate life ways and mythologies and the stories and the legends of their time. And I've had the privilege, the extreme privilege, of being in the back rooms of the museums where all this stuff is stashed away. And I've examined not dozens of these vessels, but hundreds of them. And I've recorded the images. And we have everything from Coco Paley to Spider Grandmother and the Warrior Twins. And we have hundreds of them to show you, and I can't wait to get started. It's going to be a lot of fun. So hold on to your seat. This is probably the best example that I can show you with a really, really wonderful example of how they use negative space. Now, are you looking, when you look at this image, are you looking at the negative or the positive? Now, the, the negative, the white, has the eyes. This has been interpreted as a uh, sparrow or the little messenger or advice-giving bird that shows up when you need him. It could be big fly in the prehistoric cultures. I have a feeling sparrow is a little more modern interpretation. But you also notice it's four. It's four ghost-like figures, we'll call them. Usually white, a lot of times white is used to depict a, a being or an element not of this world, uh, from the underworld, or having to do with death or illness. Um, so you could think of these as ghost-like figures. Now look at the positive. Very, very, very efficient and clever use of the negative space. There's a lot of great examples. This is great. This is the one I wanted to show you. Now look at the crane in the negative and the human form, the head, in the positive. This sort of collection of eyes. This looks a lot like the, uh, the shell bracelets that they carved out of shells. Use of the negative space. This odd creature. There again, there's a couple of turkey tails in there. There's a couple of stars, more stars. This odd creature. Look at this one, the use of the negative space. I'm not sure what this represents. We see this form of creature quite a bit. All of these elements mean something. This is a grid dot corn pattern. This little fella kind of scrunched up inside the center here. This little ziggy line is often voice or communication or singing. All right, the negative space is also used in mating antelope, mating deer. Negative space is also used to illustrate something that is within something else, as this penis is within the vagina of the, of the female. You see that application. And you want to show something that's internal. Here it is in a very violent rape scene. This is a legend of a, a maiden who has a toothed vagina, and she thwarts her attackers. These. Uh, these women are all linked together, probably captives. Don't forget, women were a commodity uh, for a long time in many cultures. Some, some cultures, they still are a commodity. But uh, this illustrates, see the negative space? Whenever they're showing something inside something else. It's clever how they showed her foot over his black body just by making it white. It's very fascinating. Ah, this is a good one. This is... Uh, this is not a uh, Mimbre's bowl. This is a Jedido yellow from Hamala Virun up in northern Arizona. This fellow's been shot with an arrow. He's dying. His legs are splayed. He's clinging to the centipede. That The centipede is the one-pole ladder. Uh, in the uh, creation myth, the people climbed up from the underworld on a one-pole centipede ladder. So if you're going back down to the underworld, you're probably going to need that ladder. Again, that's represented by the centipede. But in this depiction, I wanted to show you negative space. Again, this is his life breath. It's not his, those really aren't necessarily his innards. This is his innards. This is his life breath or life spiral. The little spiral represents a lot of things. Life breath is one of them. There again, use of the negative space to show something internal. Here we have a costume. 
This is Brother Elder cutting the head off of Brother Younger. Uh, it's one of the very well, very repeated legends anyway. It was a very popular one. This is a Quetzalcoatl costume. Now, oh brother, don't worry about Brother Younger. He he is uh, reborn and becomes the moon, so he's okay. This is a Quetzalcoatl costume. Notice the negative space. When it's a costume, they show you it's a costume. Very often, almost always, they show you it's a costume, not a creature. Uh, it's interesting how they do that. But you'll see a lot of this. I'm going to show you some more examples. That means it's a costume, and it's the use of that negative space. Notice also the head is white, and he's wearing a white, he has a white face mask. Very often when someone's dying or going to another world or going to the, back to the underworld or if the, somebody's sick or distressed, you'll see the, the face depicted in white. If you're dealing with death, you often have this white face or mask, possibly. Here we go. There's another legend of cranes and decapitation. Notice the decapitated head is in white. It's going back down to the underworld. It's not of this realm anymore. Very, very common depiction. Ah, here we have the bear hunter. Bear hunter is in, shooting the bear. The bear are probably in a cave. Notice his face. It's in white. Why is it in white? It's because he's dealing with death. He's near death, doing something very dangerous. He could pass into the underworld. Ah, mother with a sick baby. This, by the way, is a Quetzalcoatl rug or blanket. Very interesting. Uh, mother with a sick baby. Shaman is healing the baby. Notice the face. And notice the baby's face. The baby's face is in white. Baby's near death. Now this creature, this thing, this image, is really fun. This white fella all scrunched up inside the circle. You see it all the time. I've got lots of examples. This is the embryo in the womb, the baby in the womb. He's not born yet. That's why he's in white. He's not of this plane. He's not uh, in the world of north, south, east, west. He's in the unborn state. So they're depicted in white. Again, there's some more of them. Look at this little guy. Not born yet. Embryo in the womb. There's a mother with a baby. And then there's another female figure. And they're looking this way. And two other female figures looking back. These two female figures have the white face. Now, this could be an ancestral thing. This could be mother, you know, mother, baby, maybe her mother still alive, and then maybe grandma, great-grandma. It could be an ancestral image. These are a whole bunch of fellas dressed up like mountain lions. And you know it's costumes, because you see that negative space? That lets you know that these, these are guys are wearing costumes of mountain lions. See the tail over the back like that? That's mountain lions. And they're running around doing something. But you see that negative space? That's a costume. Here we have a quail wearing a caterpillar costume. Negative space. That lets you know it's a costume. Good story behind that. I wish I knew what it was. Here we go. Lots of examples of costuming. This is a serpent costume. And here we have a fella with horns and see the tail? You see that negative space? That lets you know that's a costume he's wearing. One of the best examples. See the negative space? They went to great lengths. They didn't have to do that either, see, because it's already white. They put that other line in there to show you that that's a bat costume. Notice how the tail is separated by that negative space. There's a tunneling image. This is a, I'm sure there's a great story behind this one. The fellow tunneling toward the, the birds. I, this is really kind of out there. I really don't know what this has. I don't know the story. The guy's obviously digging 
maybe to free the birds from the underworld. Who knows? This is a very fascinating bowl. Bats appear in Membray's art. Notice the white. This bat is entirely in white. But here's a bat costume again. Notice the separation. Now why a... Hmm, that's interesting. There's no, really no human elements in there, but it's definitely a costume. And the bat is in white. Now, you do see a lot of creatures totally in white. Now, whether that uh, has to do with the underworld, we don't know. Here we have rabbits in white. These are rabbit throwing sticks. They're like little boomerangs they used to hunt rabbits with. Notice the three kill holes. That's unusual. Usually it's just one. Rabbits depicted in white, in the negative. We see this quite a bit. It could just be in our... Here we are again. There's some sort of insect creature... Perhaps an ant lion larva, I'm not sure. Depicted totally in white. Or using the use of the negative space. And we have a couple of fish in the white, use of the negative space. Whether or not these images of uh, animals in the white have the same application as the underworld or the other things we've talked about, I'm not entirely sure. The rabbits in the white. The use of the negative space. Costuming is the most revealing, and life, uh, the underworld, uh, if somebody's sick, if it's an ancestral thing, the use of the negative space in white is very important. The Mimbres images we saw today were painted between 1000 AD and 1280 AD. And if you want, there's a lot more of them, and we're going to have other, uh, other videos you can see, but if you want to get a copy of the book, Membrae's Mythology. There's a lot of these images we're going to be showing. Uh, just email me, and the address is in the uh, description in this video. It's just kunkel uh, at hotmail.com. That's C-U-N-K-L-E. And just email me, and I'll, I'll sign a copy and make sure you get it. Thanks for watching today. Give me a like, if you like.